good morning. So a couple hours ago, it was light outside. I had just gotten up to shut the curtains. I leave curtains open at night sometimes, and then when the sun comes in and I want to not get up yet, I close the curtains. I close just close the curtains. And I, I was sleeping, and Sadie starts barking like crazy. Her hair standing up. I thought I saw a light flash, like maybe a car had come in. So I looked out. She's going nuts. And I looked outside, you know, keeping an eye out to see what I see. Like, oh, it must have just been a critter in camp. And then I noticed through the window. So right where Sadie is standing. You see that where, right there? That's where my garbage has been since I got here. And I looked out to my window and my garbage can is out in the woods. <laughs> so, I suspect a bear. I know there are a bear here, black bears. Sadie, stay with me. Come on. It's been a couple hours and it's still there, which means she scared it off. So it tried to drag the garbage. I mean, that's, that's what I'm assuming at this point. But uh, now I know there's a bear in the area. But it, it, it didn't come back. At first I was like, well, I'm going to go get it and drag it back. And I was like, well, it could still be sitting there, you know, guarding it. So, hey, bear. Hey, bear. <laughs> Sadie, stay with me. <laughs> it's been there for a couple hours. If the bear was still around, it would have come back and tried to get it again. Sadie scared it away. Hey, 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 come on. <laughs> yeah, stay with me. I realize you guys hear me yelling commands to her a lot but I guess it's good a lot of you are like to see the training that we've done together how good she is so she is really good her recall is phenomenal unless she's chasing something so if a bear comes through right now mm -mm, she's gone she'll be chasing the bear but you know Capone chased a bear once on a backpacking trip he was gone for a half hour and he chased the bear probably treated it and he came back so Bears are scared of things, you know, but uh, my only concern in this situation is like if it's a, a mama and her cubs and so and Sadie chases the cubs, the mama's not going to run. That's my biggest concern. So, but yeah. Hey, bear. Nothing's been out here for a couple hours, like I said. So, yeah, something definitely dragged my garbage. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's heavy. It's really heavy. So it wasn't, I mean, this is probably... I don't know, 15 pounds so there's no way a critter carried it a small critter but uh oh look at that oh look at that those are teeth marks yep look at that teeth marks it grabbed it look at that can you see right there it just grabbed it by its teeth by by it grabbed it but yeah <laughs> wow Yep, we had a bear. We had a bear. Sadie scared it away. But I've been on the lookout for signs of bear. Haven't seen any scat. Uh, I did see one small scat, but an old one down the road on our walk the other day. But, um, you know, bears do shit in the woods. So, <laughs> if you don't see scat, though, it doesn't mean there's not one not around. And the garbage. And of course, the the garbage attracts bears. And my biggest concern, always, is, especially now that I know the bear knows the garbage is here, you never want to help the bear get the garbage because then they acute, um, equate. I haven't had my coffee yet. They uh, equate garbage with humans. So what do I do now? I guess I'm gonna have to put it inside at night. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. It's gonna stink. You know what I had for my. Uh, Pacific Crest trail hike. I had some scent proof bags. They were green and they came with special ties because I didn't want to carry a bear can because I didn't want the extra weight. So I carried these scent proof bags and I slept with my food under my pillow. I know it's crazy. I read a lot of PCT hiker forums, you know, all the PCT uh, Facebook groups and you know, all the through hikers do it. I was like, it's crazy, but I didn't want to carry I can't remember five extra pounds and it wouldn't have fit in my pack so so another part of the reason I don't want to bring my garbage inside though is because they uh, that also has holes in the bottom where mice have eaten through so I don't want to bring mice in my RV that's another big concern
but what else am I going to do? I don't have any trees. I can't hang it. i got to protect the bar. So, the more they get human food from places that humans hang out, the more entitled <laughs> and more aggressive they become. I'm kind of surprised they didn't come back. So bears will, and I know this from experience and backpacking trips, uh, the last bear encounter, I think it was the last bear encounter I had on a backpacking trip up in the Sierras with a few backpacking buddies. And we were sitting around camp. I've told you the story before. We were sitting around camp playing cards. And I look over my friend Steve's shoulder and I'm like, bear. And the bear's literally like walking into camp toward his backpack. We all jump up. We sh scare it away. Go, go bear, scared. And he ran away. Literally five minutes later, he circled around and came back in behind somebody else me or I don't he came in another direction so uh, but that's in an area of the Sierras where they are too used to people uh, but Sadie did a good job of scaring this bear off it didn't come back so yeah I wasn't gonna shoot this camp because I've just I've been here for a few nights just kind of chilling but now uh, now I'll tell you about it as soon as I have a cup of coffee yeah this is the first time this has ever happened. In all my travels, I've never had, uh, I had a bear run through camp, like, I don't know, 50 yards away in Oregon. I did see the bears in Mammoth. I was out on a walk and they were 100 yards away from camp, but I've never had a bear like in camp. This is a first and I always keep my garbage outside. And I was wondering how that was gonna go knowing that uh, there's a lot of black bears in the Upper Peninsula. That's where I am, by the way. Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The UP. All right, let me get some coffee, and we'll have a chat. So funny when I imagined the bear taking the garbage can away, I imagined it grabbed it by the strap. <laughs> I was shocked to see the bite marks. I'm like, I thought it was just gonna grab it by the strap and drag it as if a bear knows that there's a strap on a garbage can and what it what it is. <laughs> Why do that when you can just bite into it anywhere and drag it away? It's a beautiful morning. The weather has been really nice here. I'm not far. I haven't even looked, I don't know. I think fewer than 20 miles from Lake Superior. So I'm gonna head up there eventually, but it's just been a while since I've been in a national forest spot where I can just relax and not worry about moving for a while. I got, it's Monday. Over the weekend I had two um, off-highway, all-terrain, quad, whatever you wanna call them, vehicles come up this road. We'll go for a walk up there in a minute. And one car yesterday. Uh, it's not car worthy to go up there. You kind of need four-wheel drive. I was tempted to go up there. I'll show you later. But uh, yeah, so not a lot of traffic. There is more traffic on the road, on the forest road out here. There is some hiking trails nearby. And I'm not that far from civilization. I came in a, a long way. I came in the opposite direction from... Oh, where was I? I can't remember the name of the town. Not Beltran. I don't remember, but I came in the National Forest the other side looking for camping, and I just kept exploring. The forest road was so good. I didn't find any camping. I kept going, kept going. The forest road was good. I lost my cell signal, and then I came to a T, and I was like looking at my phone because my map was still up. No, actually it wasn't. I came to a T, decided to take a left, see, because sometimes in these forest roads you end up on the other side, you end up with a cell signal, and that's exactly what happened. So I took a left and came down here. I got AT&T, I have no Verizon. Although, interestingly enough, yesterday I had to put my booster out to upload a video. When I put my booster out, my Verizon signal has had an X, no signal at all. I got a signal when I put my booster out. That's not supposed to happen. They say you have to have a signal to boost a signal, uh, but it 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 must have just been so weak that it registered as nothing and then boosted it to a couple bars of 4G, a couple very slow, I, unusable. But it, I can text with it. 
but I can't do, I don't even think I was able to access the internet with it. Uh, so yeah, I did end up finding a cell signal. I have one AT&T and so just decided to stop here. I'm going to go explore the shoreline of Lake Superior. There's a couple different places I want to explore, but I'm in no hurry. I, I decided I'm going to spend probably about a month in the UP and then rush through like lower Michigan and Ohio and then work my way up western New England and then come back down September, maybe October. I don't know. Loose plan. It might change. We'll see how it goes. But the weather has been so nice here, being so close to Lake Superior. There's been a nice breeze. The, it was cool yesterday. Cool enough that I put long pants and a hoodie on for a minute. And the bugs aren't as bad. I found my first tick on me because I was traipsing through the woods uh, to a creek yesterday. Because Sadie was frolicking in the mud puddle. And there's a creek just down the road. So I went into the woods to wash her off. And I came back and I had a tick on my stomach. Um, it hadn't embedded. It was just sitting there. And uh, mosquitoes haven't been horrible. I've been able to be outside more. So it's been really, really nice. Not, like I said, not as hot. The bugs aren't as bad. The mosquitoes aren't as bad. The biting flies are here and there. Sometimes I have to spray Sadie down. Um, they mostly attack her really bad. So walking is just no fun for her. So I'm hoping to, once the weather, I mean, I'm not spending any time outside. And I was thinking that I might explore this part of the country for land, but I honestly don't know if I can live in this. I know it's only a couple months a year, really, the humidity and the heat and the bugs, but that's two months, that, and then the winter, that you just don't even want to go outside. And it's just affecting me. It's affecting my mood. It's affecting my my physical you know i don't want to exercise i'm stiff because i can't even come outside in the morning to stretch so uh yeah i knew it was going to be like this i wanted to experience it for what it is you know i'm not complaining i'm just talking about the reality of traveling in, in this part of the country and the relief that now it's changing it's cooler the bugs aren't as bad so sadie So in the woods over here, I don't know if you can see, where are we? Yep, that, <laughs> you're such a good girl. There's a little patch of woods. Oh, you're, oh, you wanna play? Let me play with my dog as a, I gotta reward her. Where's your, where's your rope? Oh, there it is, come on, come on. I swear she knows sometimes I just need to see her face. She just comes and shows her face and then I say be free and let her go again. I was going to try to play with her, her favorite toy as a reward for coming. See, she's really, really good when she's not chasing something. I mean, she's even in there hunting and digging mice and stuff like that. All right, I'm chattering, a chatterbox. I'll do my stretches, have my second cup of coffee, and then we'll go for a walk. You want to go for a walk and check out the area with me? The smoke had been cleared up quite a bit, but it's been smoky again for the last couple of days. Really smoky. I think it's from the Canadian fires again. So, uh, I've been seeing some news reports that there are some really big fires in Canada wiping out cities just like it did in California a couple of years ago. One of the cities I went to, Linton, 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 British Columbia. Uh, wiped out just like Chico California was a couple years ago I just saw that like a day or two ago so uh, yeah boy rough times and I keep saying you know it's just gonna get worse you know what does that mean for all of us what does that mean for living that like this is gonna get harder and harder in a lot of ways I think without air conditioning well I could get air conditioning <laughs> I keep meaning to stop and get my um, generator fixed. I was thinking I would get it fixed somewhere along the way this summer that I would find a place to get it fixed in some city that I wanted to stay in, rent a hotel, and get the generator fixed. I still need to get that done. I mean, I've already invested $500 into it in the last year trying to get it fixed. I got the carburetor replaced. I did an oil change. And, uh, you know, he suggested after the 
carburetor got fixed. He, it worked for a while and then it stopped working and I took it back to the same guy in Pahrump and nice guy, Doug's small engine repair. And uh, he tried to troubleshoot it and he's just like, you know, you can try changing the oil, see if that resets something, but I think you're gonna have to take it to um, Onan, which is Cummins now. So I did an oil change, changed the filter and it works sometimes. I think I have video that a couple hot days, boondocking, I was actually able to run it and it did run for a while. And then it started flipping the breaker of the, uh, with the air conditioning on, it started flipping the breaker. And so like, I don't try it unless I want to use it. <laughs> and then I finger, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It's gonna, it's gonna run, it's gonna run. And it hasn't run in a while. I tried it just about a week ago and now the button won't even push in, so. But anyway, it's smoky today. Really smoky. I could smell it yesterday. And uh, my, I don't know if it's affecting my energy. My energy, it's not that hot anymore, but I don't know. I just didn't really have a lot of energy yesterday. Okay, let me show you this road. You know, I could drive this. I really could. I have driven roads like this before. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm just feeling like it's not worth it. Oh. I'm using my, my tripod monopod. And when the legs flap, you can hear it. So. So the shelf up here would be a lovely place to camp. I definitely can't do this. <laughs> this road's been washed out. <laughs> Good girl. Sadie girl. Hi, good girl. This right here is icky for driving. And what really, yeah, this part's the worst. And then the branches up here are pretty low. But they're not big branches, so they would just scrape along the sides, wouldn't cause any damage. Oh, but this is bad. I can still do it. I have, but why? <laughs> I'm fine where I am. So I've been doing a new training thing with her. I don't want her to get too far ahead of me because then she sees things to chase that I don't want her to chase. And so now what I'm doing is off leash still, we go for a walk. And if she gets too far away, I either hide in the woods or first I was just turning around and going in the opposite direction. And that way she'd have to run to catch up to me. And I noticed, you know, a few times of doing that, she kept turning around more often to make sure that I hadn't turned around to go in the opposite direction. Now, here, I've hidden in the woods and she's not been able to find me. I mean, just off the side of the road in the woods and she goes back and forth and back and forth and can't find me. And I don't know, I've done that handful of times and I'm okay and I'm already seeing a difference she's already sticking closer so that's the goal that's the goal I mean if I can get her to stick close enough that I can see what see she sees because her recall is really good until she's got that that snap even there have been times even when she sees it and she's like this and I call her she's come um, but if she sees it before I do full-on you know she's not she's not gonna come so we're still, she's, people are like, she's such a good dog. She's so smart. We work together every day. Still, we've been together, February was a year, so a year and a half. We have worked together in some way, shape, or form every single day of her life. And uh, it's, a, it's a constant work in progress, you know. I mean, I did let up a lot of, uh, after the first year. Like, I hand fed her all of her food the first year, which really bonded us, I think. And really 
just, I mean, look how good she is. And, uh, you know, but I have the luxury of being self-employed and being home with her all the time. And every time I see an opportunity for learning and training, I take it. And uh, sometimes it means it has to evolve. Sometimes it means letting her make mistakes, chase things, freak me out, scare me. <laughs> Use those as opportunities to say, okay, time to revamp our training, you know, not get complacent and not get lazy. She's doing great. I mean, look how close she's staying. Yeah, look how close she's staying. So we're coming up on the first shelf. Signs of camping up here. Signs of stop. <laughs> Big boulder place there. They don't want people driving out there. So I'm sure somebody just drove here and camped. It's an old quarry. I can tell by all the growth on the road and here. See all the trees and everything. It's really old. It's too bad it's so smoky. Even the first day I came up here, it was pretty smoky. Up, oh, come on, we're gonna go up. It's, it's, uh, poignant to be in a place like this, right? I mean, it's sad to see how much harm mankind does to nature. You know, this huge scar. But at the same time, it's really cool to be someplace abandoned, someplace where uh, nature is reclaiming her space, reclaiming everything. The, the vegetation is growing, the wildlife is back, and I don't know that it'll ever be, probably won't, it can't be, like it was before. It can't go back to the state it was before. But nature can recover and heal and become a new version of herself, <laughs> like so many of us, right? After the, we're, we're born and pure and whatever nature makes us and then stuff happens and then we have to uh, rebuild, not like we were before, but something new. I heard a story on NPR not too long ago about the impact of loud noises on wildlife. They pumped in nature sounds, sounds of water and wind at ultra high decibels to see the impact it would have on the environment. And the bats, especially the bats were affected. There was less activity and of course bats function on sonar, right? Waves that they transmit through the air. So, um, how, you know, the level of sound is going to impact them. But there were other bird species as well that were impacted, less activity. And these were heightened natural sounds, sounds that are already out here. Oh, <gasps> Sadie's got something. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. And she didn't, I don't think she killed it. Leave it alone. I don't know what it is. You didn't kill it. Come on, let's go. Come on. Imagine when you add highway, when you put an interstate through a rural area or in a place like this where it's heavy machinery. I mean, you know, you've all been around quarries. The, the boom and the bang and the metal sound. And imagine the impact all that noise had on the critters that live here. I mean, if natural sounds amplified in the wilderness affected habits of birds and bats there, imagine what a giant quarry, explosions and heavy machinery, imagine the impact that has. And of course, you know, I, I mean, we all benefit. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't know what the answer is. The answer is maybe looking at these things and starting to recognize our impact. Um, because without quarries, we wouldn't have roads that I drive on. <laughs> we, we wouldn't have bridges. There's a lot of things we wouldn't have. But it's time that we start thinking about the impact that we have. And it's, we have to. We're at critical, ma critical mass, critical point here. 
because our earth is literally, <laughs> look, <laughs> it is literally on fire. The point is, none of us are gonna survive if we can't learn from our past mistakes. And it's no, no blaming, you know, people take it as shaming and blaming. Too many, I think too many of us, I've learned this about myself, I think too many of us have such deep-rooted shame that we don't understand. That we're not able to see anything. <laughs> How do I explain this? I'm so deep-rooted in shame. And I'm guilty of this. I mean, I'm still struggling with my own shame. That I can't handle a different point of view. Or I can't handle a... Yeah, I don't know, a question or something. Because my shame is so deep that I get defensive. And that it becomes all about ego. Anyway, I don't even know how much of that I caught because my microphone is broken. Because I fell in a creek. <laughs> Literally, I fell in a creek holding my camera. And my microphone isn't working right. It's loose, it's got a loose connection. <sighs> it's always something. But. I'm telling you, I know. It's like, can't you just enjoy a walk? These are the things I think about. This is what keeps my brain healthy and active. So even if the camera wasn't on, these are the things I think about. And I'm just sharing them with my camera, which then becomes a video that I share with all of you. A lot of my travels in this part of this, the state of the, the United States have reminded me a little bit of Alaska. A lot of the places in Alaska were that I camped were uh, old quarries, just like this. They make good camping. They're abandoned. This is a, this is a national forest. And now it belongs to the critters and the trees and the leaves and these weeds and my good girl jeez look at her stand so close to me see my rig down there see Katie's in the water gonna make some chocolate pudding for later. So it's gonna be almond butter, soft tofu, cocoa powder, and whatever sweetener you want to use. I use a little agave and a little um, stevia. Mix it all up. Super easy. Mix it all up. Put it in containers and refrigerate it. And it's gonna be a delicious dessert for later. A lot of protein, some healthy fat, not a lot of sugar. And I'm gonna soak some cashews, raw whole cashews in a little bit of water for a few hours. Later I'll drain the water out, add some non-dairy milk and blend it up and that'll be whipped cream. And also a little, actually if you add uh, sugar, it'll be whipped cream. I'll add a little lemon and it'll be sour cream for my dinner later. It'll be delicious. Tonight it's Spanish rice. First you saute up some garlic, chopped onion, red bell peppers. You saute those up until the onions are soft. Then you add a little bit, then you add the rice after it's rinsed off. A little bit of tomato paste. Cumin. Chipotle pepper, cumin, stir it until the tomato paste, you want to get tomato paste cooked, otherwise it's got, it gives it depth, I guess, to cook it up. So, cook that up with the rice for a bit. I like to cook the rice up 
with the onions and the tomato paste first it gives it a little bit more of a nutty flavor more richness more depth of flavor and then when i add the liquid of, for the rice which is vegetable pacific is my favorite it doesn't have any added sugar in it so it's my veggie broth and a couple cups of chopped tomatoes out of a can and that's what i'll cook it up in to cook the rice all the way through it'll be delicious look at that once it's cooked i'm going to mix in some kidney beans to give it some protein then I'm going to top it with some cilantro, some of my cashew sour cream, a little bit of Daya shredded cheese, and it's going to be a delicious dinner. Yum. So tonight we're on bear alert. I had to bring my garbage in, which really sucks. I don't want it in here. I'm afraid of mice. But it's either that or kill a bear. You know, a fed bear is a dead bear. Oh. <laughs> stuck her nose up but we'll see if it comes back huh see if it comes back got my window open oh and my uh, bug zapper which doesn't really seem to work that great to be honest with you uh, they seem to still like me better than the zap see there's one right there mosquito I don't know how they get in here but they're still flying around I got this bug zapper on uh, Amazon there's a few in there it USB charges which is nice it's got a little light on the bottom but literally like they still seem to prefer me over the bug zapper and it doesn't zap it doesn't make any noise so I don't know what's going on a few people recommended it so what do you think why isn't it zapping the bugs all right we'll see if we get a bear tonight if it comes snooping around again but you know what if it makes any noise Sadie's gonna scare it away she's a good watchdog but I'll let you know. I'll grab the phone. I got my binoculars. I got a flashlight. <laughs> I'm just trying to lay down and I just realized I showed you something you're probably going to have questions about. So let me turn the camera around. What the heck is that? You might be asking. So, Sadie broke the screen, chasing bugs against the screen. It, it's bent. And so I was thinking mosquitoes are coming in because there's a big space now between the screen frame and the window. So I bought painter's tape <laughs> so that I can cover up the space with painter's tape. Nothing permanent, right? Just painter's tape so that when I open and close the window... It doesn't stick and leave goo behind and stuff like that. So that's what I do. I put, I leave this open a lot. Uh, but if I do close it, I can just pull up the painter's tape and then put it back down. It's kind of nice. But they're still coming in. I don't know where they're coming in. Maybe just on us when we come in or the door when I open it. Pesky little suck. Saying goodbye to this spot I've been at, I don't even know, five, six, seven days, I don't know, in the Ottawa National Forest. Today it's going to be, the hottest it's been, it's going to be up to, I think, 88 degrees. So I'm going to go to the lake, I'm not far at all from Lake Superior. So hopefully I'm going to, there's a couple of places I have mapped out for camping. I'm hoping to kind of stumble on something of my own. It'd be nice to find something right on Lake Superior. Uh, there is a state park, but state parks probably wouldn't allow Sadie in the water. and It's going to be hot, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go explore and uh, see what I find. I have no idea. It's early. I don't even know what time it is. I'm all screwed up because I just changed over to Central. Or no, uh, Eastern Time. So anyway, look at my camp. I don't think I've done any real videos of the camp itself. Like I said yesterday, there's a uh, an old quarry up there. So this is like a clearing. Luckily, I lucked out finding it, really. There aren't a lot of clearings in the forest here. 
because they're so dense. The good news and the bad news about boondocking further east, there's not a lot of it. But I guess, I don't know, people on the east just either aren't into it, maybe because there's not as much of it. The boondocking you do find tends to be, you know, not free camping in a campground. You know, like I showed you in uh, near uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. Not like that. I mean, designated free campgrounds, uh, yeah, those those can get more crowded. Sometimes they're not. Depends on where you go and, and what you're near. But uh, finding this is on no app. No app. I found this spot on my own just by driving around. And uh, the whole forest out here because there's not a lot. There's nobody out here. So, uh, yeah. So that's the good news and the bad news. I mean, if you're willing to put in the time and the effort. And uh, especially if you've got a four-wheel drive, you could go up this road. Man, that's a great spot up there in the quarry if you have a four-wheel drive. So if you're not in an RV, your options, of course, are even greater than they are for me. But still, even in an RV... You know, yeah, I spend a lot of time driving around sometimes looking, but, you know, I mean, it's worth it if I'm going to find a spot where I can be for a week. So, all right, hitting the road, heading up to Lake Superior, going to finish packing up here. No more bears. I kept bringing my garbage in every night. Sadie did look out and bark a couple times last night, but not nearly as ferociously as she did the day the garbage can got dragged into the woods. So, um, and it wasn't too bad. I didn't really smell it. I would just pull it in last thing before I went to bed and bring it out first thing in the morning. So I do need to find a place to get rid of my garbage today. Yeah, that's been that's been a little difficult. I have a full thing of garbage in there. So it's been a little difficult finding places to dump my garbage. So hitting the road that I'd show you around before I go. Oh, the flies are getting you, huh? You want to go inside while I do this? Are the flies bad? They are, huh? Come on. Oh, they're terrible. Come on. They're terrible. They're terrible. Go ahead. Go inside. You wait for me. I'll be right back. Let's see how this super duper bug blast stuff does for the critters on my windshield. <laughs> oh, and we can't forget my thermometer. I haven't forgotten this knock on wood my indoor outdoor thermometer is nice to have i did a little work around the rig i sealed my shower because my shower the wall moves i don't know if it's supposed to like on the bottom like the seal there is no seal it doesn't look like there was ever a seal but i sealed it and a few holes i drilled in my wall to squirt peppermint oil in when i had mice last year <laughs> wanted to seal those up too but uh the container broke and it all squeezed out the other end. So every time I try to do something, I make a mess. You ready to go explore? Ready to go see some new things? We're swimming today? Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Maybe we'll see a bear. Maybe we'll see a bear on the way out. Oh, you don't know what a bear is. I swear she knows what, look at, uh, is there a bear? I think it, maybe it's just, is there a Santa Claus? <laughs> is there a rock? I think she just knows, is there in the tone of voice. She's a smart girl. She's a very smart girl. <laughs> <laughs>